Today, I have a good one for you. We have a Photoshop full edit tutorial where we cover the entire process. Now, the image we're going to be using today, you all voted on this image, and this was the image that you all wanted to see me edit. And if you all want to participate in the voting process, make sure you're subscribed. If you're new to the channel, in this series, we cover the entire process from frequency separation, dodge and burn, and color grading. And don't forget, I leave a raw file in the description so that you guys can edit along with me. But keep in mind that this is an intermediate tutorial. So if you're a beginner in Photoshop, don't worry. I have your back. I have beginner level tutorials where I go slow and I go step by step on how to do frequency separation, dodge and burn, how I save for Instagram, and even some color grading videos. So now is the perfect time to subscribe to the channel because on this channel, I have a lot of educational content. Now, let's go ahead and cover todo el pedo. Before we get into Photoshop, I do want to show you what I did in the raw processing. Sometimes I get the questions of, Eli, I downloaded your raw file, bro, but it looks nothing like what you started off with. But keep in mind, I'm going into my raw processor and I'm doing a little bit of post-processing. So let's just quickly look at that before we jump into Photoshop. So these are some of the layers that I have in Capture One. Let's take a look at the before and then the after. And let's look at the split view slider. And this is once again before and after. And mainly my goal when I'm in my raw processor is to bring back some of that detail. You'll see here, I crush the blacks over here and I bring up the blacks and the shadows and also make some minor color tweaks. I like to keep my image a little bit flat. Uh, I try not to push the colors too much in the raw processing. I like to reserve that for Photoshop. And if you're curious what my post-production looks like, at the raw level, I have a couple of videos in Capture One on my YouTube channel. I'll leave those in the description. All right, now that I'm in Photoshop, my first step is always to clean up the distractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of the background. So there's a couple of ways I can do this. I can click the background there and then drag it to the new layer icon. Or I can also press Command J. So I'm going to press Command J. I have layer one here. And my main focus is removing all the distractions. You can see one of my stands that I had here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the patch tool. And you can press J on the keyboard. Now, if you push Shift J, you can cycle through every single tool in that group. So in this case, I like the patch tool. And the way this tool works is I just select around the object that I want to remove. And then I simply just drag to what I want it to look like. So right about here, that looks fine. And I'm going to push control minus to zoom out. There are a couple of distractions here with the rocks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. And I'm going to use the same tool. I'm going to use the patch tool and I'm going to simply going to click and then drag and just make sure things match up. There we go. And let me go ahead and remove this one. And then I'm, I'm going to have to remove that softbox. You'll notice in my work, I usually try to get the softbox as close as possible. Um, a lot of the times, the reason for that is I like to get nice, beautiful, soft light. But also sometimes if I'm working in a condition where I'm shooting directly into the sun, um, it usually requires a lot of power from my strobe. So getting it closer will make that brighter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm still going to use the patch tool. So I'm just going to simply drag around. But this time, Instead of me dragging across, I'm pretty sure I can do it. I'm pretty sure it'll do a good job. It actually did do a good job. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that, but I'm going to show you an alternative way. So I'm going to try out another method. I'm going to make a selection. And then I'm going to go to edit and then we're going to go to content aware fill. Let's see which one does a better job. What's cool about the content aware fill is that it's going to give me a preview of what it's going to look like and how it fills it in. It looks like it did basically the same thing. What you see in green is where Photoshop is trying to detect. Basically, it's looking at the pixels in green and it's trying to fill it in with that same sky. So essentially, I don't want it to grab from that palm tree and I don't want it to grab from the arm here. But once again, what I like about this one is it gives me a preview and I can refine it with some of these settings. Overall, did a great job. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. So there was two different methods that you could use. You could use a patch tool, drag across, or you could use the content aware fill. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK there. And so we've removed the distractions and there's still one more 
that I want to work with. And that is the palm tree that is right above her hand. I'm going to press Control D to get rid of these marching ants. And what you'll notice is that I don't like this palm tree because it's competing with, you know, her face. You know, I see this kind of black uh, palm tree in the background. And to me, it's distracting. So what I'm going to do is in order to remove this, there's a couple of different ways to do this. But the approach that I'm going to go about it is making a new layer and using the clone stamp and just cloning that in. So I'm going to make a new layer, just a simple blank transparent layer. I'm going to go to the clone stamp. So I'm going to push S on the keyboard and I'm going to make sure that I have my opacity and flow at 100%. My sample is current and below. And I'm going to go ahead and push S and then I'm going to push the right bracket on the keyboard. That is going to allow me to increase the brush. The left bracket is going to let me decrease it. Now I can also right click and I can adjust it here. Now for this one, I do want the hardness to be at 0%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample the sky from this area. So I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard. You'll see it turns into a target symbol. So once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and click. That targets where I want to brush those pixels. And you'll notice that I'm purposely going to brush over the hand. Don't freak out. Okay. So I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to go right about here. Okay. And I'm going to stop and I'm going to resample right about here. I'm going to hold Alt. And then I'm just going to brush right over. Okay. Now you're probably thinking, well, dude, that looks terrible on the hand. It's okay. I intentionally did that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and add a layer mask. So I'm going to add the layer mask here. So white basically means that that those pixels that I brushed over are still intact. But now what I want to do is I just want to get a black regular brush. So I'm going to go to the brush tool. I'm going to make sure it's set to black and let's reset these to 100%, 100%. And I'm simply going to brush with black. So black removes that effect that I just did. And the reason why I like the layer mask is that I can brush it back in if I go a little bit too far. So it gives me that nice flexibility. So I'm just going to come back and you'll see that I messed up there. No need to panic. I'm going to come back with my white brush and I'll adjust that. So I'm simply just going to come in here. And there we go. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. And I'm brushing with white now. So it's brushing those pixels back again. And it's very important that you are on the layer mask, right? So this whole process is able to work brushing with this white and black because I'm on the layer mask. So I am going to rotate. Sometimes rotating allows you to brush a little bit easier. So I'm going to rotate it. So all I did is I pushed R on the keyboard and I'm just rotating it. And I'm still just brushing in these pixels just to, to adjust this last little part. About there. And some of this stuff, people probably won't even be able to notice. So unless you have those pixel peepers. Okay. So let's take a look. What do I have so far? It's looking good. It looks like I have a little bit on the hand here. So I'm going to brush with black to remove it here. Okay. Looks like I have a little bit there. And I'm going to come back and I need to brush it in just right here and then we're pretty much ready to rock and roll and getting into the next step so let's just take a look at this i'm just going to make sure i fade this in a little bit there we go okay so let me fix the rotation reset that and there we go so it looks like we got all of that i always like to just double check and click the eyeball to show the before and after Sometimes I need to kind of just double check and I usually like to fade it off just a little bit here, just like that. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now merge this. I'm going to push control and then E. Okay, so now it's all merged and now I still feel like it's maybe not the best it could be. But now that I got that palm tree out of the way, now I can come back to this patch tool that we used before. And I can blend it just a little bit easier. So let me come back and let me try 
Let's try something right about there. And if I had tried this with the palm tree, it would have been a little bit more difficult to blend because this bottom part wouldn't have been adjusted. So you're probably thinking right now, like, Eli, why didn't you just do that with the palm tree? And it wouldn't have blended the bottom part uh, because the bottom part had that palm tree. So the top part would have been pretty good. And so that's why um, I decided to remove it with the clone stamp first. So looking at it again, that looks a lot better. Very cool. And so now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Now that we've removed all of the distractions, now it's time to get into our skin retouching, which is going to be done with frequency separation and dodge and burn. So now I'm going to come into my actions right here, frequency separation. We're going to go ahead and hit the play button. And what I'm going to do is the whole purpose of frequency separation is to separate the texture and the color. So I have to find a good balance here and a good number so that the texture is removed. And so right about, let's go 15 or 14. Ooh, that's too much. I accidentally went there. Let's go 15. There we go. And I also want to look at the flyaways because we're going to use frequency separation to help me with the flyaways. So you'll notice here, if I click, you'll see that I could see the blemishes. And once I let go, this is the goal here. I want to make sure that the texture is removed. So I'm probably going to come up just a little bit higher, maybe around 20. And that looks good. I'm going to double check the flyaways. Flyaways look good. Yep. So this tells me that when I come in when to adjust these flyaways, it should be a smooth process. Now, some of these areas are going to be a little bit more difficult, but I'll use the mixer brush to brush in this color to even that out. And I like that number. So we're going to go with 20 and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And let's see what we got here. So what I want to do is first thing I want to do is I want to focus on these flyaways, right? So it was a very windy day. We had a lot of wind, the hair is going everywhere. We also got the blemishes. So I like to do the blemishes with frequency separation. So I'm going to go into my texture layer and I'm going to go ahead and select my patch tool. And because I'm working with the texture, you'll see that I'm just going to be adjusting the texture only and not necessarily the color. So this process is going to take a little bit of time. I'm just simply going to click and drag around. There's a couple of areas that I'm going to need to remove the hair. So what I'm going to target first is the blemishes. Then I'll focus on the hair here on the face and then we'll get into the flyaways. So the blemishes on the face is relatively easy. I'm just simply circling around and then just dragging to a part of the texture that looks similar. It's very important that I'm not dragging to some random piece of texture. I'm finding texture within that range to sample from so that when I blend it, it'll blend nicely. Now, you don't have to use the patch tool. You can use the clone stamp. You can use the spot healing brush. You can use the healing brush. Use whatever tool you find easier for your process. There is no right or wrong tool here. Some people recommended the patch tool. Lately, I've been loving the patch tool. There's moments where the patch tool doesn't work that great and I have to use the clone stamp. So really just kind of decide which one is best for you. So right now I'm going to go ahead and finish off the blemishes. Then we'll move into the hair on the side of the face. Now that I've got the blemishes removed from the face, I'm going to go ahead and start moving towards the rest of the part of the body and see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted, like these areas over here. All right, looks like I have all of the blemishes removed. Now the focus is going to be the hair now. So what I'm going to do is this is where I like to use the clone stamp. Now this process I'm going to make sure up here it's at current layer. It's very important. 100% opacity, 100% flow. And what I want to do is I want to sample. Let me zoom out here. And I'm going to sample some of this blank texture over here. And I'm going to see if I can blend this off. So I'm going to hold Alt so I can sample. And I'm simply going to 
brush this in. And you'll notice that some of the color is not going to blend right. That's okay. We're going to get into the mixer brush in a moment. So don't worry if things are not looking right. So just to reiterate, right now I'm on the texture layer. And I'm just sampling from this blank texture. And I'm basically just brushing this over so I can get the flyaways adjusted. And it looks like we have some of this kind of haloing effect here. That's okay because what we're going to do now as I'm on this process is I'm going to go into the color backup adjust opacity layer. Now what I need to do now is I need to go to the mixer brush. We want to be able to mix this color from the sky and brush this in to blend this off. So these are the settings that I have. It usually changes every couple of weeks or so. So right now I'm using 60, 50, 50, 50. And I do have a dedicated tutorial on frequency separation where I talk about how the mixer brush works. So if you're new to the mixer brush, definitely check that video out. So now what I want to do is I want to make my brush bigger and I'm going to start blending in this color. And if I go a little bit overboard, see how I'm going into the hair? That's no, no biggie. I'm going to come in and at the end, I'm going to add a layer mask. So all I care about right now is that I'm just blending off some of these areas, okay? And like I said, don't worry that you're seeing me kind of brush into the hair. I'm going to fix that at the very end. And that's why I love the layer masks. It just gives me that creative flexibility. It's a non-destructive way of working. And so I'm gonna make those adjustments in a moment. And I'll probably do it right now just so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Because I know some of you are looking at this like, what in the hell is he doing? And so uh, let's take a look at that right now. So now what I'm going to do is right now I'm coming back on top of my frequency separation. I'm going to add a layer mask on top of all of this. Now remember we talked about this earlier. White means everything, every single effect that I've been doing frequency separation has been revealed so far. But I know that I brushed in over the hair a little bit too much here. So now I'm going to get the black brush. So now I'm switching to the regular black brush. And I have it set to black. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and brush with black. So when I went over on purpose, now can just even that out. I can even bring back some of the hair if I choose to do so. So I love doing it this way because it provides me so much flexibility and I can always brush it back if I need to. So I'm going to brush a little bit of this hair here and I'm going to brush it away right about here. Okay, I think that'll look fine. And let's come back to the white brush. And so, yeah, so I'm just evening out everything with the black brush, making sure that I get rid of all of those areas that I went over once again on purpose. And that's why I wasn't all stressed out about making it look perfect because I knew that I was going to come back with this little layer mask to adjust some of these items. Okay, so let's take a look at it so far. What I've done with the frequency separation, with the hair, got rid of those flyaways, everything's blending, everything's looking beautiful, everything's looking gorgeous. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna continue this process, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna go to the rest of the, the hair. I do wanna leave some flyaways. I'll probably clean up some of the areas over here that I'm still not satisfied with, and then we'll move on to the next step. So once again, I'm coming back in with my black and white brush just to kind of blend things off and just to make sure that I do have a couple of flyaways. I don't want to have it super perfect, but I do want to have it so that, you know, I get rid of a lot of those crazy flyaways because, yeah, this day was not only hot, but it was just crazy with the wind. So, so far, this is looking good. Um, I've already come in and I want to now adjust this little part. I'm not satisfied with this part. 
And I think we're almost ready so that we can start moving in to the other parts of the body with the mixer brush. So let me finish this part off and then we'll move on. Before we continue the tutorial, I do want to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take their next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative people on topics including photography, productivity, business, and more. Make great use of your downtime and check out Skillshare's online classes, which include a combination of video lessons and class projects. The class I recently enjoyed watching was Mastering Cinematic Compositions in video and film by Jordy from Cinecom.net. What I enjoyed most about this class is that Jordy teaches fundamental composition techniques that are very essential to great video. And that's what I wanna get better at. I wanna sharpen my pre-existing skills when it comes to video. And what I love most about Skillshare is the fact that the courses are structured so that I can watch something within 30 minutes to an hour and with my busy schedule, that's something that's very important. I need to be able to absorb content in a structured manner because I want to be able to walk away with some kind of educational content so that I can start applying it in my work. And now is the perfect opportunity to start learning new skills. The first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one-month free trial to Skillshare Premium. There we go. I'm 100% satisfied with this now. I did struggle with this part a little bit. I did have to come back just a little bit just to even that out. But I think you all get the overall idea. So now let's just look at the frequency separation that I've just done with the hair there. So this is before and then the after. Now, of course, you can decide. Maybe you like flyaways. You keep them. Me personally on this one, it was a little bit too much. So I got rid of them. So it's up to you guys if you want to remove flyaways. So now what I want to do is I want to now use the mixer brush. OK, so that I can actually smooth out some of the imperfections in the skin. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this to multiply. And I'm also going to lower down some of the opacity here. OK, and making it black and white just allows me to see some of the imperfections on the transitions. OK, now let me move this helper layer on the top of everything, because then we're going to see that awkward color up there. So now what I want to do is I want to get the color back up, adjust opacity. And remember, when I'm working with this layer, I'm simply just working with the color. Now, I'm not moving any texture. Now, ignore this part because this is the part where I was using the layer mask. But what I want to do is I want to focus on the legs. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to mixer brush and I'm just going to smooth out some of the color here. So all I'm simply going to do with the mixer brush and I have all these settings here, I'm simply just going to brush some of this down and you'll notice that I can remove it looks like a bruise right there and so real quickly this is before and then after you can see that I've already quickly been able to smooth out some of those areas now it's very it's a very powerful tool so one of these one of the things when you're do, using this mixture brush is to be very careful it's real easy to get carried away I've certainly done it at times so you have to be real careful with how you're utilizing um, this mixer brush, okay? Because you can really go overboard. And I'm just softening up some of these little uh, shadow transition areas. And so the general rule is to go usually less is more. In a little bit, I'm going to adjust the opacity so that uh, just in case I did go a little bit overboard, I can kind of salvage uh, some of the... Um, originality, originality, I don't know if I said that even right, the original part of the color. So let's see, we're going to bring this in and we're going to go here. And so once again, I'm just evening out some of these little areas. I don't need to go super perfect because I'm going to come in with my dodge and burn in a little bit, but this can definitely speed up the process and I don't have to spend as much time doing the dodge and burn because 
dodge and burn. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to spend any more than 20, 15 minutes doing dodge and burn. I want it to be quick. And so doing frequency separation allows me to speed up that process. Now, now that I'm here on the cheekbone here or on the cheek, what I want to do is I'm actually going to use the lasso tool. Since this area is all basically even right here, I'm going to select this all and I'm going to go to filter blur. And because I'm on the color layer, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to blur that color so it just kind of gets even. And so now what I want to do is I want to increase this number. There we go. 18 looks good. Let's try maybe a little bit less. Let's go 15. So if I hit the preview before, after, and if you notice, it's just a small difference. And I'm going to hit OK there. And then now I'm going to come back up here to the forehead. And I'm simply just trying to even out some of these areas. And I'm just evening out the transitions. So when you hear me say I'm trying to even out the areas, I'm just trying to even out the transitions. There's a lot of areas that go from you know bright to dark and it's like very abrupt. So I'm trying to just even that out. So if I take a look here, let's look at the before and then the after, you'll see that look at the transitions here on the cheekbone, just kind of softened up that, that cheekbone. And if I flatten it out too much, it's okay. Cause when I get into my dodge and burn and I get into my global, I can always bring that back if I need to. Let's also take off the helper layers real quick. And let's just kind of take a look at the overall right here with the before and then the after. So yeah, so everything's looking good. What I want to do is I'm going to take off this black and white. Let's just look at the whole frequency separation as a whole. And let's see what we've done so far. So before and then after. My opinion's looking good. And let's look at the before and after of everything. Some of the color kind of got mixed up here when I was fixing with the patch tool. And I almost forgot. I'm going to come back a little bit. And I'm just going to go on my color layer. We're going to do one last little kind of swipe here just to even that out when I was blending in the transitions, maybe didn't blend as much or as well as I wanted. So now that looks better. And so overall right now, let's take a slow this down so we can see, there we go. That's looking good. And let's zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see this. This is the before and then the after. So now let's get into the dodge and burn. Now that we're done with frequency separation, let's get into dodge and burn and the skin retouching. So I'm going to come into my actions over here. By the way, I have these actions for sale. So if you want them, you can definitely purchase and support me. But I'm going to go ahead and delete this helper layer. Let's go ahead and go into dodge and burn. And I just want to emphasize I do have a beginner level tutorial on dodge and burn on the channel. So those of you that are maybe new to it, definitely check that out. So now what I want to do is in this process, we definitely got to make it black and white. We're going to change the blend mode to multiply. That's usually the blend mode that I find works best. There's also overlay normal and multiply. Multiply works for me. And so I'm going to basically create this nice tone curve so that I can see the transition and I can blend them off. So lately what I've been doing, I've been doing a couple of different things. I've been, instead of just always adjusting the curve over here, I've been lowering the opacity and that seems to be working out just fine for me. And so another new thing that I'm doing is when I come into my dodge and I get my brush tool, let me push shift B, there we go. I have my todo el pedo brush. I actually have been working with flow at two. So 75% opacity and flow two. Um, it's very important that you guys experiment. You know, I don't really keep my numbers the same. Sometimes I want to try different things. And so now what I want to do is I want to go into my dodge. And basically what dodge is, is basically I'm increasing the exposure wherever I brush. As long as I have white on my brush, you'll notice that the layer mask is black. That is going to increase the brightness on wherever I brush. So what I want to do is I'm going to come in here and I'll notice that the transitions up here need to be blended off just a little bit right there. And so real quickly in about half a second or a second, you'll see that I've quickly blended that off. And I think one of the reasons why I like flow too is that it's a little bit faster way of working. Once you kind of learn dodge and burn and you know the areas on where you need to dodge and burn, it just works a little bit faster opposed to where 1% was a little bit too slow. And I was noticing that I was spending a little bit too much time putting it at flow too, at least for me, is helping me work just a little bit faster. So remember when I'm working with my dodge, I'm just brightening up areas 
And my goal is to kind of make these beautiful transitions from light to dark. And I don't want to get rid of the shadows. I just want to soften them up. So my goal here when I'm doing my dodge is to simply go slow and then rotate the image around sometimes. That helps me see some areas that I need to fix. So I notice that the forehead is a little bit too bright. So this is when I'm going to come into my burn. Burn does the opposite. It's going to darken up areas. So I'm simply going to just darken it up just a little bit so it's not as bright up here on the forehead. And I'm also going to darken up this area just ever so slightly. And I'm seeing some transitions over here as well. They're a little bit too bright. Now I'm going to reset it. Now I'm going to come back and just, let's just look at the forehead real quick. So if I look right here and let me go ahead and take this black and white layer off. So this is my before and then after there on the forehead. And let's look at the burn before and then after. OK, so I already know that the cheekbone, I'm going to have to work on this and this cheekbone as well. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to lower down my opacity just a little bit more. I'm going to slowly come in and work on these areas. Now, on this tutorial, I am going a little bit slower than normal. Usually I go pretty fast. A lot of people have been giving me some feedback saying, hey, Lyle, I want you to slow down just a little bit. So you guys let me know in the comments. Do you guys like me explaining just a little bit more on these tutorials? Or do you guys like the faster paced? You know, let me know in the comments. I'm just curious. I'm always trying to improve and always trying to you know, make videos to what you guys uh, want to see. So let me know in the comment section. Don't be shy. Leave a comment. Do you like the longer format or do you like the quicker format? So I'm still here with my dodge and I'm just looking for these transitional areas and just once again, softening them up. And I think the biggest struggle that people have when they're first doing dodge and burn is they don't know where to dodge and they don't know where to burn. My best advice would be to look on Google and look at contouring. Look at how when they do makeup, that's going to give you a good indication. Also where you're placing your light and your modifier. That's also going to help you decide where you should be dodging and where you should be burning. So. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this part. I'm just going to work on this section here on the left and then I'll come back and we'll do the right uh, side together. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done on this side. If I look at the dodge layer and I hit the eyeball, this is the before. And let's really look at these transitional areas here. And you'll notice that these are the transitions that I'm talking about. See how it goes from light to dark and then it gets bright. And then here it gets really dark. And here I'm just trying to even that out. So you'll see that I've done that. And if you're noticing, well, Eli, it looks like maybe you flattened out the image just a little bit. That's OK. When I come back in for my contouring, I'm going to make sure that I bring that shape back. So, so a lot of times when I'm doing my local dodge and burn, I will tend to flatten out the image just a little bit, which is totally fine. And like I said, when I come back in for my global in a moment, that's where I'm going to bring back some of the shapes. So now I'm coming back within with the burn right now, and I'm just darkening up some areas. I did notice that there were some areas that were a little bit too bright, and I'm just trying to even that out. Now, I'm not going to pixel peep and go through every little area. Sometimes you can go overboard with dodge and burn. In a lot of these little areas, uh, people are not going to really notice if you post on Instagram. So for me right now, this side of the face looks good. Now what I want to do is let's go ahead and concentrate on this side of the face. So what I want to do is I actually want to reset my curves adjustment layer on my contrast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the hand tool here. I'm going to raise up my shadowed area so I can see it a little bit better. And then I'll maybe darken up my highlights, and that's going to allow me to see this, see these transitions a little bit easier. And so you'll see some darker areas right here that I want to work with. And I apologize if you guys want me to zoom in just a little bit more so you can see this. The reason why I'm not zooming in, it's not that I don't want to show you guys. It's just whenever I'm doing my dodge and burn, I try not to zoom in too much because when you're zoomed in too much, 
that's when you tend to go overboard and you start to see so many little transitional areas and you want to fix every little thing and then you kind of go overboard. And so that's something that I definitely don't want to do. So if you're wondering why I'm not zoomed in so much, I'm trying to prevent myself from going a little bit overboard. So I do apologize if you guys prefer me to zoom in. I'll probably crop in when I'm editing this video so you guys could see this a little bit easier. So, so yeah, so right now I'm simply still doing the same process. I'm just trying to even out some of these transitions. My left hand is on the keyboard so that I can make the brush bigger and smaller throughout this process. Uh, that's very important. Sometimes you don't want to keep the same brush size the whole time. You want to go small and then big, depending on the area that you're working with. Okay, so my left hand is always changing the brush size throughout this process. I want to make sure that I'm not just keeping the brush the same size. So left hand on the brackets, and then I'm using the Wacom tablet. I forgot to mention that. So I know some people like to use the mouse. Use whatever works for you. There's some people that do an amazing job. Some of the best retouchers use a mouse. And then you have your other retouchers that use the, um, the tablets like I'm using. Everybody's different. I'll tell you this much. When I made the transition from mouse to tablet, it was very difficult. I hated it. And then once I got used to it and I set up the tablet to my style, it made it such a breeze and I'll never do editing with a mouse again. But, you know, it's really up to you all um, what you prefer. And once again, whatever's easier for you, it's all it all comes down to whatever works best for you. So I'm going to go ahead and let's take a look before I start speeding this up. Let's take a look at what I've done so far. So this is before and then after. Let's look at the burn before and then after. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my time. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments, work with this cheekbone. We'll maybe work on the nose and the eyes together right now, and then we'll go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and work with the nose now. Yeah, we'll work with a little bit of the eyes and the lips. Um, let's take a look at what we've done so far. So I'm gonna leave it black and white. So this is before. Zoom in just a little bit, there we go, that looks good. As a before and then the after. And let's look at the burn before and then the after. So now let's work with the nose now. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm still with my white brush. And I'm simply just going to even this part out right here. Soften a little bit of the eye here. And then the lips, what I'm gonna do and what I'm trying to concentrate on with the lips is I'm brightening it up. I'm looking for the areas on the lips that are already bright, that had that nice little highlight pop from my strobe light. And so that's what I'm doing there. Okay, now I'm going to zoom into the eyes and I want to make sure that when I do this, I'm going to increase my flow. Let's go about 4% flow and I want to bring this eye a little bit to life here. So I'm just brightening it up. I'm going to come on this side as well. We're going to brighten that up. And if I go overboard, remember, I love that layer mask because we can you know, adjust anything if I go overboard. And so right about here looks good. And I'll brush a little bit of brightness on the opposite side of the catch light. And let's do the same over here, brush a little bit on the opposite side of the catch light. Right there looks good. And so overall, let's take a look at this. We got the before and then the after. It's looking fantastic. So now we still got a little bit of work to do. I'm gonna kind of just look around on the legs. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the legs. I do notice that the hand is a little bit bright. And if you could guess why it's a little bit too bright opposed to the other parts of the image is because remember, I had my saw box here. Remember the very beginning? Let's take a look at that real quick. And remember due to the inverse square law, whatever's closest to the camera is gonna be brighter. The face is a little bit further back. 
So you'll notice that the leg and the hand got a little bit brighter. So what I want to do here is this just a small detail. I'm going to come into the burn and I'm not going to, you know, stress out about it, but I'm just going to simply just darken it up just a little bit because usually whatever's brightest in the image, that's where our eyes are going to go to. So I just simply want to just darken this up ever so slightly. And let's go ahead and darken up this area just a little bit right there. So now what I'm going to do, once again, I'm going to go to the rest of the skin and just even it out real quickly. And then we'll get into the global dodge and burn. All right, now that we're done with the local, what I'm going to do, and this actually, before we jump into the global, let's hold alt on the dodge. This is everywhere that I dodged. Okay. And then this is the burn. This is every, every single part that I burned there. Now what I want to do is I want to add an extra dodge and an extra burn layer. And now what I want to do is I'm going to do my global. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my flow to about 4%. And what I want to do is I want to brighten up areas on the face where the light was landing on. I really want to make this pop. This is where I get that three dimensional pop look in my images. So what I want to do is I have a global check layer. This is not something that you have to have or use. It just kind of gives me a reference point on where the light hit first. So like right here, it tells me on the face, this area should be a little bit brighter. This part of the cheek on top should be bright, the nose, the chin. And if I move this back, you'll see that the lips start to get that nice pop right there. So I'm going to need to brush in there. If we look at the different parts of the arm, you'll see that this area got bright. So I'm going to need to come in here and just brighten up these areas just to make them pop a little bit. And I'm also going to do that with the hair as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And I'm simply going to brush just a little bit on the forehead. I don't want to get too much, a little bit on top here, top there. I do want to make the lips pop a little bit more. So I'm going to go a little bit excessive there on the Cupid's bow as well. Chin, I think is fine. I'm going to make the areas around the eye pop. There's a little bit of areas that could use a little bit of glow. So I'm going to just come in around in here. Okay. And I need to be careful. I, I removed the brightness here. I just want to brighten it up just ever so slightly. I don't want to get too crazy. I just want to come back in here and just brighten up a little bit of these areas. I don't want to get draw too much attention over here. This area already looks bright enough. I might add a swipe or two over here. And so the next thing that I want to do is now I want to concentrate on the hair. So this is where I'm going to bring the flow up to about seven. So the flow, the higher the number I bring it, now when I brush with my tablet, it isn't going to increase the brightness on wherever I brush. So I'll, once again, I'm looking for areas of the hair that already have that beautiful brightness. I'm not going into the shadowed areas to add brightness to a shadowed area. I'm just going in with the bright areas. So I'm just simply brushing that in. There we go. And so if we look at this, this is the before and after just adding that nice little glow to the image. Okay, I like that. Now we're going to do the opposite now. And we're going to come in with the burn. Now the burn, remember we talked about earlier where I said maybe I might have flattened out the cheekbones a little bit. So I'm going to look at the original one real quick. And you'll notice that this area needs to come in a little bit darker. This cheekbone, I'm going to have to bring it in a little bit darker, maybe darken up some areas here in a little bit. And then maybe this cheekbone and underneath the chin. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on. So I'm going to bring back some of that depth with the global burn. So I'm at 3% flow because I don't want to overdo it. And I'm simply just going in and just brushing in a little bit of darkness. So if you look at here, brushed in a little bit of that darkness and that's where I burned. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to come in from this cheekbone and I'm simply just going to brush and I'm adjusting the brush size throughout this process, going from big to small right there. I'm actually going to darken up the forehead. I feel like it's a little too bright. There we go. I'm going to brush underneath here. 
we're going to get some of this and darken it up here. Okay. And now let's come in to some of these shadowed areas right here, especially the shirt. We're going to darken up that. We'll darken up the skateboard ever so slightly. So what I'm really trying to do here is I'm darkening up the shadows. And that's what helps me get that kind of three dimension, three dimensional pop. Okay. Now I'm also looking at the ground here. You can see that, that the light hit the, the ground kind of lit it up just a little bit too much for my taste. So I'm going to also darken up this area. And we'll take a look at what I've done so far in a little bit. But right now I'm concentrating on the ground and just darkening up the exposure here selectively with the brush tool set to white and I'm on the burn and remember the burn is going to darken up areas. So if I hold alt, this is, these are all the areas that I've darkened and let's take a look, look at the overall and you'll see that the cheekbones look at the depth that I brought back in the cheekbones right there. Okay. So overall, everything's looking pretty good. I always like to look at my local dodge and burn, the before and then the after. I think everything's looking good so far. Okay, I'm happy with that. And I think we are almost ready. And yeah, I think we are ready. We are ready for the color grading now. Now that we're done with the skin retouching, remember my first step is always to go in and remove any distractions, remove the softbox. Then we removed all the distractions on the floor. Then we got into the blemish removal, removing any kind of blemishes and the flyaways. Then we went into frequency separation to do a little bit of skin retouching. Then the heavy skin retouching is done with dodge and burn, selectively brushing in areas to lighten and darken. And now we get into the fun stuff where we get into the color grading. So now let's get to that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down into my layers panel and I'm going to go into my adjustment brush. And what I want to do is my first process is always to go through selective color. And the reason why I love selective color is I can target the specific colors that I want to adjust. In this case, I want to focus on the skin tones. The skin tones are always going to be in the reds and yellows. So I'm going to go into my reds. And what I'm going to do is I already have these numbers saved. Now you can, you know, kind of play around with this. You can drag it to the left. Dragging it to the left is going to add more reds into the image on the cyan's. The magentas, I can add more magenta by dragging it to the right and then more yellows if I drag it to the left. If you want to know everything about selective color, I do have a dedicated video at a beginner level that kind of describes everything that will be in the description. But basically, when I'm doing my selective color for my skin tones, and let me zoom in here, is I am, I usually don't push the numbers too much. I try to keep it kind of at a minimum, especially when I'm doing my my uh, skin tones. Now, a lot of my skin tones is actually done at the raw level in Capture One. So I don't have to really push it too much. Um, and like I said, if you want to know what I do in Capture One, I do have tutorials dedicated to that. So believe it or not, this is all I did just for my skin tones. It's very subtle effect. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it on your screen. I'm using a BenQ monitor and I can see just the subtle difference that that's making. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. We stay nice and organized. I'm going to double click and I'm going to name this skin tone. So one of the things I encourage you to do is when you're doing your skin tones, focus on the reds and the yellows because that is where the skin tone lies. Okay. Now, what I want to do now is I want to focus on the background. I want to color grade the background. One of the reasons why I want to separate that, let's say that I wanted to, let me make another extra selective color here. And I say, okay, I want to really push the skin tones or the, not the skin tones, but the sky in the background, right? And I start pushing these colors and I start really creating all of this interesting depth, right? Well, one of the issues is that it's also affecting the skin tone. So what I want to do is I want to, when I make a new selective color, I want to make sure that I'm on this layer mask. We're going to use those layer masks to my advantage. I've talked a lot about this throughout this tutorial already. But what I want to do is I just specifically want to color grade the background and not affect the subject. So what I need to do is I need to mask out the subject. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to select and I got to make sure I'm selected on the layer mask. And you'll see here it says subject. Photoshop's going to do its best job to detect the subject and kind of make a selection for me. Most of the time it does a good job here, it does a great job. 
I don't really care that it didn't do a good job of the skateboard. It's not going to be the end of the world because it's all white there. But if I wanted to, I can come in here and start brushing this in with the uh, quick selection tool. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. There we go. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to grab a selection tool. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to go with the lasso tool. I want to soften up the edge of this selection just so it kind of blends off real nice and easy. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to feather. And then here I want to do 25%. You could do 30, 40. It's really up to you. This one I'm going to do 25. I'm going to hit OK. And now that I've feathered that selection, you'll still notice that it's a white background. It means no matter what, if I start um, adjusting settings, it's going to do it to the overall image. And we want to mask out the person like we talked about earlier. So what I want to do is I want to go to edit and I'm going to go to fill. And if you remember when we work with layer masks, if I fill it with black, that area is not going to be affected, which in this case is the subject Savannah. So when I hit OK, you'll notice, look at what happens to the layer mask over here. If I hold Alt, you'll see that now wherever I color grade, it's not going to affect the subject. So right now I need to get rid of my selection. I'm going to push Control D or I can come up here to the menu and then go to select, deselect. So now when I color grade, you'll notice that this is the area that's not going to be affected. If I hit the backslash key, you'll also see in red, that's the area that's not going to be affected. So now when I come back into selective color and I start pushing some of these colors, it's only going to do it to the background. So I'm going to go eight here. And now I can really push some of these colors and not have to really worry too much about affecting the subject because I've masked her out. So that gives me a lot of flexibility. So now I'm working with the reds and I'm looking at the background, right? So now I'm also on the yellows and I'm gonna come over here and let's go into the yellows and I'm just kind of tweaking the colors. Honestly, selective color is really easy to work with. You kind of just honestly just play around with the sliders. Those of you that maybe are not too technical, just play around with the sliders and just look what or adjust it to what looks good to your eyes, okay? So right now, once again, I'm just affecting the yellows. I'm going to come back to the reds. I'm going to push the reds on the blacks to really make that color come back a little bit. Right there looks good. And then there is a little bit of blues back here. So I'm going to go plus five and I'm going to darken up the blues in the background. And then I think I'm going to come also in the neutrals. The neutrals would basically be your midtones in the image. So I'm going to add just a little bit of cyan in there. And then I'm also going to add just a little bit of yellow. So if I hit the eyeball, you'll notice this is the before and after. And once again, what's great about this is that this does not affect at all the subject. Okay. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to actually darken up the background just a little bit. Okay. So in order to do that, I'm going to make a curves layer. Okay. And I'm going to add a couple of points here. So I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to go about to, eh, let's say, 206. And then I'm going to make sure my output's 203. And I'm at basically just adding like an S curve here. Okay. And I'm just typing in these numbers so that I can get exactly what I did when I originally edited this image. So 64 and 60. Okay. So same thing. You see how I just darkened up the image just ever so slightly brought some of that tone back there. Okay. Now, one of the issues, once again, is that I just want to darken up the background ever so slightly. I don't want it to actually affect the subject. And what's great is I already made this layer mask earlier, and I'm just going to copy that over so that when I darken up this area, it's only doing it to the background. So all I need to do is hold Alt on the keyboard, grab this layer mask, and drag it up to the other layer mask. And then it's going to ask me, do I want to replace this layer mask? Absolutely. So now you'll notice that the background only got darkened, and the subject still stayed at the same tonal range, okay? Now, if I wanted to, I can even come in here. Let's say we go to the blue section. I can even color grade the background if I wanted to. So in this case, I do actually want to do that. I'm going to darken up the, or not darken up, I should say, but I definitely want to maybe add just a little bit of warmth to the image, to my shadows. So when I'm working in my blues channel, and I drag this down because this is my shadowed areas. If I drag it down, that's adding more yellow. And if I drag this up, it's going to add more blues. In this case, I actually want to add just a little bit of warmth to the background. Let's go into the greens and let's see how this might affect the image. Okay. 
And I actually want to come into the shadows as well and just add just a little bit of magenta. So when I'm in my greens channel and I drag that down, that adds a little bit of magenta. So once again, before and then after. So adjusting the exposure and the colors of the background. So let's just take a look at what I've done just with my color grading. So I'm gonna double click this, this name, color grading. And this is what I've done so far to kind of set up the image. This is before and then the after, everything's popping. Now we're gonna really make this colorful sky pop in a little bit. So make sure you stay tuned. We're gonna get into camera raw, but we're gonna make that sky pop in a little bit. All right, now what I wanna do is I love going into camera raw and making some extra adjustments. So what I want, what I want to do is I want to make a merged copy of everything, make it into a smart object. I do have this action that I do have. And by the way, those of you that are like, man, I don't want to do the select subject and then feather, all that stuff's kind of like time consuming. Just a reminder, I do have these actions for sale. It does all of the work for you. So if you want to support me once again, actions are available. So now that the camera raw filter has been run, I'm going to go ahead and double click right here. It says camera raw filter. And I already have the preset saved. We'll take a look at all the settings that I applied. So let me go ahead and apply that real quick. I'm going to presets in Savannah YouTube. And let's go ahead and take a look at it, okay? So I did add a little bit of contrast. And looking back at this image, I know that I'm probably going to actually add a little bit more highlights into the image right about here. Because I'm looking at the histogram and I can see that the highlights are not bright enough. So I'm actually gonna brighten this up just a little bit more right about there. Okay, so if we look at this right there before, after, that's where I'm, about where I want it. So that's looking good. Okay, then we got my luminance. I don't wanna bring up the oranges too much because that's gonna really bring up too much of the detail and overexposure on the face. So I didn't go too crazy here. Saturation didn't do anything, hue. Um, the one time I do mess with hue is my reds and oranges. This also helps me with my skin tones as well. So I did a little bit negative two and, and negative one. And then in my highlights, I got that teal at seven. And then I got my, eh, I guess my, my brown reds at three. Let me see if I increase this a little bit more. Kind of like it with a little bit more this time. So I'll go about five this time. Sometimes when you edit an image for the second time, you might see things a little bit differently. The grain, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Lately, I've been going with a little bit more grain, like 15, so I'm gonna add 15. And then the primaries, this is just kind of setting up the colors just a little bit. We're actually gonna come back to this in a moment because we're gonna push this sky back here. But overall, didn't do too much at the camera raw level, just added some basic adjustments. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And let's take a look at the brief before and after. So if I hit this eyeball, before, after, adds a nice little touch to the image. And what I want to do next is I really wasn't satisfied the first time I edited the image with the sky. I really wanted to push the colors. But before we get to the colors, I just realized I also want to come to the hair. I want to even out some of the hair. So you'll see that we have like these bumps here. So before we get into the color, let me come into filter and then liquefy. And what I want to do is I just want to even out some of these areas of the hair. So everything kind of, everything's kind of even. So I'm going to simply just come in here. I'm gonna zoom in, I just press Z on the keyboard and we'll go minus here. And all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to just move this with my, what tool is this called? Forward warp tool. And all I'm simply going to do, and this is a small detail, by the way, you guys don't have to do this. This is just me being like, oh, okay, I wanna just even out all this stuff. So this is totally not necessary, okay? And if you'll notice that, yeah, some of the hair is not perfect when I edited the image right now, that's okay. This is the second time I've edited the image. Uh, you guys can go in there and take your time and get everything all nice and perfect, okay? So, and you guys get the overall idea of what I was trying to say there, perfect. So here we go. So if I hit this before, after, just evening out the hair there, and I do like to add a little bit of volume to the hair. So I like to expand it out just a little bit. Okay. And so right about there, and that should be good. Okay, cool beans. Now, now let's get back to the background, the sky over here. Okay. And so the background of the sky, what I really wanted to do here is I really, really, really want to bring out some of those colors. And in order to do that, I'm going to make 
a merged copy of everything. So I'm going to hold Control Shift Alt E. Okay. And it's going to make a merged copy of everything on top. I'm going to make this into a smart object. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. Convert for smart filters. There you go. Smart filters. There we go. And now what I want to do is I'm going to come in to the camera raw filter. Okay. And camera calibration does a great job of pushing the colors, but the problem is it does it to the overall image. And I wish you could add layer masks with the camera off filter, but you don't have that ability. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use the layer masks once again to really push the colors. So when I'm pushing the colors, you're going to notice it's going to happen to the skin tone and everything over there. Okay. And so what I want to do is I'm going to mask that out. So let's say saturation. So if I come over here and I start pushing this, see how like the color really comes out awesome in the background, but it's also affecting the skin tone. That's where I'm going to use the layer mask so that it's not going to affect the subject. Okay. So once again, I'm just tweaking these and I'm just looking at the background. Don't worry what I'm doing to the face right now. I'm just tweaking and adjusting these to the subject. Okay. So let's take a look at what I'm doing to the backgrounds. So this is before, after, before, after. So those colors are really popping back there. Let's maybe bring this down just a little bit. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask, like what we've been doing. OK, I'm just going to simply copy the one I have already here because I don't want this to go into the subject. I'm going to replace it. There you go. So now the colors are popping. I'm going to come back to this. I don't want to adjust the colors on the floor either or the background over here. So I'm just going to get the black brush. This doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to increase the flow here. And I'm going to adjust all of those color adjustments everywhere on the image. Or at least the bottom half of the image, I should say. And let me get my opacity all the way to 100%. It's going to bother me that I don't have it at 100%. There we go. Okay. And so I'm just simply brushing real quick so that that color adjustment is only on the background. Okay. So you'll see now the layer mask right there, the area in white is only where that color grade has gone. And I really pushed those colors, really added that nice kind of like fire effect to the background. So that looks nice. I'm really liking that. So now that I have that, now what I want to do is I'm going to run one of my actions here, my gradient map tone. This is one of my favorite ones that I like to add, adds this beautiful kind of crispy contrast to the image. And so what I'm going to do now is I just want to figure out a good opacity to kind of work with. So here I'm going to go about maybe 18. Let's maybe try 14, hit the eyeball before and then after. I think 14 is looking great. The next thing that I want to do is whenever I have like a background and I have these darker areas, I like to add a nice little fade to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go curves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my blacks and you'll see right here, you can see this little gradient. It goes from dark and it kind of goes into midtones and highlights and whites. So right now I'm grabbing the blacks in the image. So I'm telling Photoshop the blacks in my image. Let's make them look more like shadows, which in this case is right about here. Okay. So if I hit the eyeball, this is the before and then the after. Okay. That looks cool, but I only want to work with the areas over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this mask because remember, this is doing it to the overall image. I'm going to push control I on the keyboard. That kind of basically makes it black. So it's not showing up anywhere. And the reason why I did that is I specifically want to brush where that effect is going to show up. So I'm going to make my flow maybe about 10. And now what I want to do is I want to brush that kind of fade effect specifically where I want, which is this background. I don't really like the crushed uh, black effect going towards the background. And so if you're curious as to what I just did there, you'll see that it just adds a little bit of that fade to the background. Okay. And so this is the before and then the after looks like I need to also come in to the fence in the tree a little bit right here. And there we go. 
at about here. And we'll leave this area down there dark. So let's once again, just look at the before and after. That's looking pretty damn good. And I wanna say, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost wrapping this up. So the next thing that I want to do is I always like to come in with the curves layer. And then I want to take a look at my exposure levels. So my exposure level is looking good on the forehead. It's looking good on the cheekbones. Is there any areas that are a little bit too bright? And so what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this area here. I typically want my exposure levels to be up right around here. If my exposure levels on the skin tone are here and here, it's probably a little bit too bright. And if I feel like it's a little too bright, I can always click right where the forehead is and I can just simply just use the arrows on the keyboard and that can darken it up ever so slightly so I'll probably darken it up just a little bit and what I can also do is I'll take a look at the levels adjustment and this will show me areas that I might need to adjust in this case let's go into the midtones let's brighten up just the midtones ever so slightly there what if I bring in these I like this, so I'm going to bring it around two, but I'm going to bring up that fade because it's darkening up the image. I don't want to remove that fade, right? So I'm going to put this on top. There we go. And so overall, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. I think it looks awesome. I hope it does. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments. You guys, come on, give me some feedback in the comments. Does this look good or not? Come on. Let's see. Let me look at the overall before and then the after. Let's zoom in here. Let's look at before. After, let's zoom in some more. Before and the after, okay. Now, one other thing that I did do, which I haven't decided if I'm gonna include this in the video, I did notice that the nails were a little bit too long. So all I simply did, and I'll, you know what, I won't do it, but I'll just show you what the process I did, is the nails, I didn't feel like it went with the theme here with the skateboard. So what I did, is I simply made a new layer, okay? And then I came in with a clone stamp and I made sure I have current and below and I just sampled the skin and I simply just came in here and just trimmed them down just like that, okay? Now, once again, I'm not gonna do that right now. It's gonna take a little bit too long um, but if this is something you guys want to see future-wise, leave me a comment. Say, hey, Eli, do everything. But yeah, basically, that's all I did. I know it looks off a little bit, but uh, I obviously would take my time and do that. But basically, that's all I did. Just came in with a clone stamp and just kind of softened these up because I felt like they were a little bit too long. But yeah, that's it, guys. That pretty much wraps it up. And that concludes the tutorial, guys. If you all enjoyed this, make sure to leave a comment. Also, I have over, what, maybe 12, 15 of these full edit tutorials. So if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to tune in, make sure to subscribe, and also follow me on Instagram. If you guys enjoyed this photograph and you're wondering, Eli, what equipment are you using? What are your camera settings? I want to see where you're placing your light. All of that information is on Instagram, and you're really missing out if you're not following me there. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.